In this video, we are going to discuss about some tips that will help you to write more productive Python code. We are going to talk about problems such as writing tens of else if statements. What could be a better solution instead of writing tens of else if statements in your projects? So that's the style of that video. We are going to take several problems that you will see in a lot of Python projects and we are going to discuss about the solutions that you could provide in order to solve them just cleaner and in a more Pythonic way, so-called. So I believe that after watching this entire video, you will have some new tools that you will probably want to implement them on your projects that you are working right now. So with that being said, let's get started. Sometimes we tend to use the same arguments when we call some instances and call some functions. Now, in that case, you can see that I repeat the bg equals to black four times, and that's something that you want to avoid because in the future I might decide to change the background color across all the buttons, and in addition I might decide that I'd like to add some more attributes that will affect the layout of this button here. So, one way that you can get over this is by using a dictionary that you can name, for example, button layout, and you can use pretty much the same key value pairs like you did in the arguments that you passed in in the instantiation of this button here. And so now you can go ahead and import this button layout, and you can go ahead and say double asterisk button layout and it will pass in the key value pairs that are included inside this dictionary as the keyworded convention like in here. The double asterisk sign is very useful in that case so this is equivalent. And one more advantage of that it is the fact that you can go ahead and now change the background color for all of the buttons. You can also go ahead and decide here a foreground color for all of your buttons for example. And in addition, if there are more layout attributes that are accepted in that case, you can also affect the font size and the font type for each of the buttons. So that is a perfect example where you want to avoid passing in the same parameters and once you recognize the duplication of that, go ahead and use a dictionary and pass them with the double asterisk sign. When we write Python programs then it becomes harder to test specific areas of our code because there are a lot of lines of code in each Python file. So in that case, I'm using this employee class as an example, and we also have here the init method that uses a small validation of checking the length of the name argument that is received here. If it is less than or equal to 10, then everything's fine, but if that's not the case, then we get out with this exception. So in order to verify now that this program works, then we might go ahead and use the Python shell in order to debug it smoothly. So I'm going to open the terminal and I'm just going to say Python and then I'm going to just import the information from this file, right? I can go ahead and say import main because it will import all the code from the main class. I can also specifically say from main import employee and it doesn't really matter, it is just a matter of what you prefer to use. And now I can go ahead and say E1, for example, equals to an employee, and I can really try to go ahead and test this by passing in name equals to Jim, meaning that I'm passing in a name that its character's length is just three characters. Okay, so this works because E1.name returns the expected result and actually being more comfortable with the python shell will really be helpful for you to write faster code because now let's say that you want to add a method that will only give you the last character of your name right so in that case you might not be remembering exactly how you should be doing this so i can go ahead and take the e1.name and try to play around what type of index number I should be using here in order to achieve the goal of getting the latest character. So maybe it could be something like that or something like that or something like that. Now you can see that I receive faster results for every time that I want to test something very very specific. And let's say that now I really want to grab this code snippet and do something with it. Let's say that I want to use it as a property here. So I can go ahead and quickly use a property and I can just go ahead and say here last char name and then I can just use return and replacing this with self.name like that. 
So sometimes, again, using the Python shell to test specific things is very, very helpful. And for myself, I can say that since using Python shell with my projects, it really helped me to write faster code. So relying on our previous example, let's go ahead and open our terminal again using the same employee class. I'm going to say from main import employee and now I'm not going to assign the employee instance to a variable because I only want to check if instantiation works. So I only want to say employee name equals to gym. I don't really care about storing this inside a variable and you can see that everything works. I receive this weird string back. So this is basically a reference to the object in the Python's memory. Now there is a way that you can override the output if you want to receive better result or cleaner result in order to understand what instance it is talking about. So overriding the REPR magic method is going to be helpful in that case. You can go ahead and say def REPR with double underscore in the beginning and in the end and you can go ahead and return your custom string in that case. Now let's simulate this with just a dummy output which of course we are going to change in the future. So let's get out of the Python shell, clean everything and again Python from main import employee and I can just go ahead and say name equals to Jim and you can see that I receive employee here back. So now let's try to play with this string a bit. Now the best practice here should be returning a string that will be equivalent to the way that you instantiate an employee instance. So this means that you should be returning the exact string that allows you to create the instance in the Python code. So if we go back here, then we should be returning this string. Okay, because this is the best practice when it comes to returning REPR strings back. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to just paste this and then I'm only going to change name equals to Jim. Of course, I'm not going to leave it as it is. I'm going to refer to self.name and pay attention that I changed this to a formatted string. So this works. Okay, so now that we have done this, then again, I can refresh my Python terminal, right? I can say again from main import employee and then I can go ahead and instantiate an instance name equals to Jim and you can see that I received the same string back. Now what are the advantages of using the double underscore RAPR in that case? You can just go ahead and copy and paste this and debug more instances by only overriding the name, right? You can use now different names to instantiate different objects. Maybe you want to check now if the program will fail, if you will use more than 10 characters, which really does. So using the REPR method in your classes is really going to be helpful in the future to debug and test specific areas of your code. So if you are enjoying so far, please consider hitting the like button because it helps a lot to spread this video on YouTube and also consider subscribing to my channel so you will never miss an upload that is dealing around how to be a better Python programmer. This is a typical example that you will see in each project that needs to deal with decision making. Now using a lot of else if statements in this case could be very painful because this will mean that you have to extend these else if statements every time that you will look for supporting a new kind of animal. Now besides doing multiple else if statements then it makes a lot of sense to maintain a dictionary that we could name in general supported animals and then the keys could be the kinds of animal and the values could be the sounds that this animal basically makes. So now we will delete everything from here and pass in pass temporarily and we can use a class variable that we can name here supported animals and this will be equal to a dictionary and we can say that dog has this and the cat has that value and we also had duck before so let's type it in as well and now that I have this then I can basically say print animal dot supported animals dot get and then I can basically pass in here self.a because self.a used to be the kind of animal and this is the only parameter that I receive in this animal class. So now that I have done this, then I can get out of the animal class 
and I can go ahead and say animal one is equal to an animal and let's say dog here and then we will speak so if we go ahead to our terminal and execute this program then you can see that the result is as expected now you can actually go ahead and type in here an animal that is currently not supported like a bird right so I can go back to my terminal and say and you can see that I receive none back now you can actually decide the default value once this get method does not know what kind of supported animal it looks for so you can go ahead to the get method and as a secondary argument here you can say unknown and this will basically override the non result you will just receive unknown back and that's good because now you have a better program and once you want to keep support more animals then you can basically go ahead and add here more key value pairs so this example is going to be about what not to use in python and that is definitely the global statement global statement allows you to use variables that are inside the function scope so that you will have the ability to override variables that are not in the function scope so in that example we have this p1 underscore age variable that you can see that in the fourth line i convert it into being global so that i can override its value inside this function now once i'm doing this then i can basically call this function one time and then i can print the p1 underscore age now this will achieve my goal right because i really want to increase the age so if i execute the program that's going to work but there are multiple reasons that you look to avoid using the global statement global statement turns your python files just less readable it is less understandable to really absorb what is going on with this file and what it does so that's one reason you want to avoid using global and the other one it is because it will make your functions less dynamic now we can understand that this function only supports increasing the age for a specific person p1 right but what happens if you want to increase the age for thousands of people so in that case you will probably consider receiving a parameter like p underscore age just some random person's age that we look to increase so i can now change this function name to increase age because it makes more sense i can go ahead and basically say return p underscore age plus one and then what i can do here is basically override the variable that is declared in here but that's fine and the reason that it is fine because it is just more making sense to override variables that are in the same scope now this line and this line are in the same scope right so i can go ahead and say p1 underscore age is equal to increase age and then this expects for an argument so i'm going to say p1 age and once i pass in this one then python's memory still remembers this value but from that line then p1 underscore age should be 21 because we changed its value and we overrided it in this line so now i can go ahead and say again python main.py and we receive the same result so remember that once you see that you want to use global statement inside the functions consider using parameters instead and understand what is the best thing to do in order to make the specific file that uses global more readable okay so i hope you liked the tips in that video let me know in the comment section if you are going to implement those tips in your project and also consider leaving a tip of your own so it will be helpful for new python programmers okay everyone so as usual if you liked it please hit the like button in the video and also consider subscribing to my channel and i will see you around in my next upload